Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and do a guide for a two sample hypothesis test. So let's go ahead and read our scenario. So it says that Dallin has two friends who have each decided to start up a new moped company. Trying to be eco friendly, they each independently invested in hydrogen fuel cells for the power source. Each of their designs are slightly different, and because of this, Dallin suspects that on average, Go Bikes has a different kilometers per liter performance than that of Hydrogen Scoot. He wishes to test at the significance level of 7%, so he randomly selected mopeds from each of their production lines, put a liter of hydrogen in each of them, and drove them until they quit. Here is the data that he collected. So we can go ahead and click on our data and we can just copy our data that we got from this scenario and let's import it into our R commander. And we know that we've done it correctly if we see this little blue data set pops up now or whatever you named your data set. It's going to be blue. We can click on our view data set and we can see that we've got our two things in here. So we've got the company of the two different mopeds and we have how many liters or sorry how many kilometers per that one liter they were able to go okay so let's start off with some of these preliminary questions so what type of data are we dealing with so the type of data that we're dealing with well we're actually kind of dealing with two so we've got this data which is our categorical data and over here we've got numerical data which one are we really interested in we're really interested in this piece of numerical data and we're just dividing it by the groups or the company that we're dealing with. So the type of data that we're dealing with is numerical. And then we can go down here and it says what's the grouping variable of interest and the moped company is our group that we are interested in. The response variable that we're interested in is going to be the kilometers per liter or how far this thing goes. And the population of interest, it's not all hydrogen mopeds. It's not electric mopeds from GoPeds and Hydrogen Scoot, but we're interested in just the hydrogen mopeds from Go Bikes and Hydrogen Scoot. So the parameter of interest is going to be the true mean kilometers per liter. And the method that we should be using for our test statistic is, well, we've got a couple of options, right? We have, we can do a two independent t-tests for different means equal variance or we could do a two independent t-tests for a difference in means unequal variance um, those are our two real options some of these other ones in here like we've done them but they don't really apply to this since we're dealing with these two groups we're trying to compare them we need to see if we can have equal means or not so the first thing that we need to do is we can do just like a basic statistics we can just run a descriptive statistic and we can just run some like numerical summaries. And we want to do it by our group of company and we can click OK. And once we have done that, let's take a look at some of our summaries. And you know, what? I'm going to go back in and like get rid of a few of these things that we decided to do. Let's go back to those numerical summaries. We'll do the statistics. We don't need the quantiles. We don't need the IQR. Let's take the standard error though and we'll go ahead and click OK. OK, so now what we need to do is we need to see if our standard deviations, if the original standard deviations of these two groups are close enough to be considered equal. And when we look at them, they are not. Go bike, or go bike is more than two times that of hydrogen scoot. So because of that, we need to use unequal variance. Let's go down to independent t-test for unequal variance and let's just double check if we got that yep unequal variances okay so when we go down here and ask for what is the appropriate test statistic since we're using this t-test we are going to use the t for this guy our next question is our sample size sufficiently large for it to do our analysis now remember we could either have somewhere in here talk about how both are normally distributed we don't have that in this situation so we have to fall back on our central limit theorem and as long as the sample sizes are sufficiently large or as both groups are over 30 uh, then we're okay and we look down here at the sample sizes of these two groups we have 66 in go bikes and we have 32 in hydrogen scoot so we are good to go we have sufficient yep so it says yes and sample size is at least 30 for both samples we are good to go Okay, so now we're ready to kind of start off and establish our null and our alternative hypothesis. So when we grab this drop-down menu, uh, we can see that we can either do mu1 minus mu2. 
can do pi 1 minus pi 2 or just not applicable if their central limit theorem hadn't been satisfied. So we're going to select mu1 minus mu2 because we're dealing with means here and we're not dealing with proportions. And we're going to say equals and the baseline is that they are equal to each other. Now when we do our alternative hypothesis, it's going to be identical to the null hypothesis except for our inequality. So let's go back up and look at what our inequality should be. So it says that Dylan suspects that on average Go Bikes has a different kilometers per liter. So we don't know if Go Bikes is uh, goes further or doesn't go as far as hydrogen scoot, but we just suspect that they are different from one another. And that is really, really small to see. So let's see if I can kind of blow it up a bit. And we've got that not equals two. So now when we're doing our hypothesis testing, we're going to set group one as go bikes and group two as hydrogen scoot. So we need to make sure that this is how we're going to be doing our subtraction and our setup. Uh, because it's just important for how R is going to actually do um, the analysis. And we can show you how it's going to do this. So we can actually see it over here. It has whatever um, group comes first. That is going to be the group that is set as group one. And this is going to be group two. So we've got Go Bikes is group one. Hydrogen Scoot is group two. And if we go back over here, that's what we want. Go Bikes is group one. Hydrogen Scoot is group two. Okay, so the alpha that we have is 0 0.07 because it says it up here that we're testing at the significance level of 0 0.07. So it's going to be our alpha level. And now we're ready to calculate a few things. So the first thing we want the x bar 1 or the sample mean. And so we can just go ahead and copy this guy for go bikes and bring it over here. And we can bring this guy right on over, sample mean for group 2 and bring it on over. So next we need this t-test. We actually want to do this comparison. And so that's what we're doing in our commander is we're having it run this two sample hypothesis test, trying to compare if these two groups are diff are similar or if they're different enough that we can say that actually we, you know, we found some significant difference that they're different. So what we can do is we can go to our statistics means because that's what we're dealing with. And we can do a independent samples t-test. And so our groups is our company, responses, kilometers uh, per liter. And we want this to be two-sided because it's not equal to. Our confidence level is going to be 93. And do we assume equal variances? We're going to say no, because like we said down here, the standard deviations were too big to be considered equivalent to one another. So we'll go ahead and go ahead, click OK. And we have now our t value right here. This is our t. We want to copy and paste it. And we need a p value. And we can just copy and paste this guy. And our p value is much greater than our alpha. So we can just say greater than. And let's just get our confidence interval. Now we're going to put down the, this is where we think that the true mean is actually located. At the true mean difference between those two. So we think that somewhere between, uh, and we want that negative sign, negative 0.958, whatever, and this positive. So what this actually means is that we think that it's possible that mu1 is smaller or that mu1 is greater. And so since zero is included in there, in our confidence interval, zero was what our hypothesis was. And so since zero is inside of our confidence interval, we know that we're going to fail to reject, just like we knew we were going to fail to reject since our p-value is greater than alpha. So we can just say fail to reject the null. So we can say that in conclusion that Dallin has collected insufficient data, and we can say t, and this is our degrees of freedom. It's kind of a weird degrees of freedom, and the reason why it's like this is because um, we had unequal variances. You don't need to know how to get this number. All you got to do is just grab it from the output. And we got it equal to being this 0 0.5069. We've got our p-value. We've got our alpha. And to reject the claim that the true mean kilometers per liters of go bikes and hydrogen scoop are the same. We just collected insufficient evidence. And so we're going to select that guy. And then we can just go and check our answers real quick. And after submitting our answers, we find that, yep, we did just fine. We were able to go through and get greens. Uh, all the way down. So this is how we were dealing with two sample hypothesis testing for means. And 
one caveat that I want to put here is that if we had insufficiently large data that we would put NAs all the way through um, because we wouldn't be able to run this analysis and at the very end we would select that we had insufficient data to, uh, to use our analysis techniques and that we would need to stop. Um, the other thing that I want to point out is this was for a two-tailed test, not equals. Uh, we could also have less than or greater than. And if we find significant evidence, then we need to go all the way down here and put up what we think that our uh, confidence interval actually is so that we can state if we have significant evidence and we do reject the null, we need to say where we think the true difference actually is. So, but in a nutshell, that is how we do, uh, once again, two-sample hypothesis testing for our means.